Boeing Starliner, nothing more than a joke. Its first crewed test flight not only failed to achieve its goal, but it's left two astronauts stranded in space. So what's the real reason that caused all this? Has NASA finally realized SpaceX's Dragon is a gazillion times better than Starliner? All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. But before getting into the main content, I gotta tell you, thank you all for supporting our channel over the last three years. We now have 86,000 subscribers, getting very close to that 100K burger. To achieve this, we need your help. So please hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss out on any exciting content and also giving us a lot of motivation to make these videos for you every day. And with that, thank you so very much for watching. Now, let's continue. While there have been many articles covering NASA's poor management and the handling of the issues, what we should be more concerned about is the disaster caused by Starliner that has left two astronauts stranded on the ISS. As the head of a major aerospace company, Elon Musk is always concerned with such matters. He replied, true, in a tweet on X. Why is there not more media attention to this debacle? I have a hunch that companies involved were in reverse positions, SpaceX in trouble with Boeing coming to the rescue. This would be the leading news story every day. That's true. Even a minor issue with one of SpaceX's uncrewed projects gets a ton of attention from the company, let alone a manned mission that's been delayed for this long. However, to date, what we're seeing more are the silences, as the involved agencies like NASA and Boeing are forced to make game-changing decisions. The silence about the astronaut situation and the core issues that caused the incident is becoming more and more noticeable. And this largely reflects the differences between Boeing and SpaceX. SpaceX, under the dynamic leadership of Elon Musk, Musk has built an image of a groundbreaking innovative company willing to take calculated risks. This management style, combined with the significant success of the Dragon spacecraft in NASA's commercial crew program, has helped SpaceX become a focal point of media and public attention. On the other hand, Boeing, with its long history and more traditional approach, is often less transparent even when facing challenges like those encountered with Starliner. This highlights the growing shift in the aerospace industry, where emerging companies like SpaceX are challenging traditional contractors like Boeing. On the other hand, there are legitimate reasons why Boeing's being cautious with its updates. First, it's due to underperforming Starliner itself. To be honest, the issues with Starliner are not unfamiliar to us. In fact, it's faced numerous problems from tests in 2019, 2020, and 2022. This raises the question of whether Boeing's pushing forward with the spacecraft despite not fully resolving past issues. Of course, this would be a barrier to Boeing being comfortable with publicly disclosing the root causes of Starliner's failures. In contrast, SpaceX's Dragon has been highly efficient, successfully sending over 53 astronauts to the ISS. It's not that Dragon hasn't faced issues, but the swift handling by SpaceX's engineering team is evident as Dragon continues to launch regularly. Secondly, being open is difficult for Boeing due to the differing visions and motivations of the two giants in the space market. Boeing's got a solid reputation and has developed close relationships with government agencies like NASA. However, this can also lead to a mindset focused on maintaining contracts and maximizing profits from government-funded projects. This approach, while ensuring financial stability, may reduce the drive for innovation and risk-taking. In contrast, SpaceX, founded with Elon's personal vision of colonizing Mars, represents a new business model in the industry. Their motivation is not just profit, but also achieving major goals in space exploration. The difference is evident in how the two companies approach their projects. SpaceX often sets higher goals, embraces failure as part of the learning process, and quickly adapts based on results. Boeing, with its more traditional corporate culture, tends to be more cautious, prioritizing stability and adherence to established procedures. Finally, there's the expertise of CEOs David Calhoun and Elon Musk. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk criticized Boeing CEO David Calhoun, accusing him of lacking the expertise needed to lead an aircraft company. Musk argued that the CEO of an aircraft company should know how to design airplanes, not spreadsheets. Indeed, this is a reasonable argument, considering Calhoun has a bachelor's degree in accounting from Virginia Tech, but lacks any technical background. This becomes even more prominent as Boeing struggles to bring its Starliner spacecraft back from the ISS due to a helium leak affecting its propulsion systems. In other words, Boeing's not only struggling significantly with its aviation electronics division, but even its cursed spacecraft project continues to face difficulties. 
Perhaps Elon's right in suggesting that a new leader has been needed for quite some time. Under Calhoun's leadership, Boeing's faced multiple crises, including two 737 MAX 8 plane crashes that resulted in 346 deaths and an emergency landing due to a cargo door that popped open. Since then, several whistleblowers have come forward, accusing Boeing of lacking safety standards. Calhoun's now resigned, with many agreeing Musk and Boeing need a leader with technical skills. Emirates President Tim Clark has said Boeing needs a strong technical leader and a governance model that prioritizes safety and quality. However, finding a new head capable of addressing Boeing's many challenges is not an easy task. Several candidates have declined Boeing's offers, reflecting the tough mission ahead. But ultimately, Robert Kelly Ortberg, a longtime aerospace veteran, has taken on this new role starting August 8th. It remains to be seen how Ortberg will adjust to Boeing, so for now we'll wait and see. Either way, NASA will fully support Boeing, as it does not want SpaceX to dominate the launch market. Officials don't want SpaceX to win contracts without competition, and they are also providing opportunities for other entities to participate in major programs. However, the bottom line here is that most are struggling to meet the fixed-price contract requirements, or if they do, their performance is unlikely to surpass SpaceX. The shift from traditional cost-plus contracts to fixed-price contracts helps NASA save money by eliminating cost overruns and delays, thus stimulating the market. This means that suppliers can own the vehicles and sell the vehicles to various entities, including NASA. However, the timing of this effort is quite sensitive, as the aerospace industry is only just entering the commercialization phase. Major traditional aerospace contractors like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman are very familiar with cost-plus contracts, which give them time and financial freedom. In particular, Boeing's Wall Street-style leadership often prioritizes profit over quality and reputation, making traditional contracts their goldmine. Therefore, it's understandable that this change may weaken those companies, leading them to reassess their participation in future fixed-price contract competitions. Northrop CEO Kathy Wharton stated in August last year, We are becoming even more disciplined in ensuring that we work with the government to use fixed-price contracts appropriately. Another area of potential interest is the private companies that NASA is eyeing. They're hopeful that these new unicorns with innovative mindsets will thrive in the fixed-price contract environment. Ironically, the rocket market is incredibly tough, and any new company will need wealthy backers to heavily subsidize their operations, like Blue Origin with Jeff Bezos or SpaceX with Elon. At the very least, they must demonstrate that the company will generate sustainable revenue to attract investors. Last but not least, they must have smart strategies to survive and thrive during this harsh transition period, creating significant differentiation from long-established traditional companies. SpaceX's approach represents the most complete and up-to-date understanding of how to launch rockets effectively. Thanks to this, SpaceX is thriving within NASA's commercial space ecosystem. To catch up with SpaceX, these unicorns can leverage the advantage of being successors by observing Falcon 9 and learning how it's done. Standing on the shoulders of giants is also a strategy SpaceX employed during its early wild days by learning from NASA's space shuttle program how to build heat shields, analyze failures, and implement appropriate solutions. However, to break SpaceX's dominance, the key is not to compete with them on their own terms. Someone should do something fundamentally different, although this doesn't always guarantee success. This is where startups with unique ideas come into play, like Spin Launch with its massive accelerator technology or Sierra Space with its mini space shuttle Dream Chaser. As for Boeing's Starliner, it has become outdated and lacks the power of competition. Perhaps NASA is still favoring Boeing's Starliner in order to only protect its own reputation. Ten years ago, NASA contracted billionaire Elon Musk's relatively new rocket company and Boeing to create a commercial space taxi market. The agency paid SpaceX only $2.6 billion, and the latter got $4.2 billion. At the time, it made sense to award Boeing a heftier contract. The company had already begun work on a spacecraft and had experience working closely with NASA, going all the way back to the Project Mercury in the late 1950s. Those close ties were reiterated as recently as a month ago by Dana Weigel, NASA's International Space Station program manager, who reminded reporters about Boeing's role in the space station itself. This isn't the only Boeing-built spacecraft we'll operate from Houston's mission control, she said. We are looking forward to Starliner, but we're also really proud to be operating the ISS, which is the longest continuously operational spacecraft in human history. Once the agency retired the shuttle in 2011, NASA was forced to tag along with Russian Soyuz rockets from Kazakhstan to get their crew into space. That might have been fine, but the U.S. was paying upward of 86 million bucks a ride. 
We've not had the friendliest of relationships with Russia, particularly recently, and the head of their space agency said, well, NASA can get itself a big trampoline. Sven Billen, an aerospace engineer professor at Penn State, said, as an American, the inability for us to get to space on our own spacecraft was, to me, an embarrassment. The need for Russia to get Americans to space ended when SpaceX's Crew Dragon paused all its tests for certification, but NASA never intended to have all its eggs in Elon's basket. After the Columbia disaster, it took two and a half years for the U.S. to return to space flight. The agency has wanted at least two vendors, so there's always a backup if the FAA grounds one for any reason. Their position on the issue remains, even as the space station nears retirement in 2031. The need for Plan B became clear last year when a leak on the station forced NASA to consider a contingency of loading all the astronauts in one SpaceX spaceship to get home, should an emergency evacuation be necessary. If something happens to Dragon, God forbid, then we're back to asking the Russians for rides, Bylan said. I'm not sure that the American public has the stomach for that. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.